Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. We have a huge Steam update to go over in this video. Uh, currently in the beta program, and it will be available, ultimately rolled out for everyone, but currently available in the Steam beta client, introducing Steam families. Now, we have to look at this post in totality, because there's some really big features that are being rolled out with this update and uh it's kind of a upgrade from uh, some stuff that was already available in the past we'll run through it all and there are some things you have to be mindful of in terms of how good this update actually is so steam families when i saw this post my head immediately went to one thing the only thing i care about with family sharing and things like that is being able to share games within the same household or being able to share games to your friends. Now, this is family sharing. You shouldn't be sharing this stuff to your friends, but some of you guys, you know, live with, uh, you got a roommate, whatever the deal is, you guys get the idea. The one limitation of digital gaming, in my opinion, has been the limitations in terms of what you can do with the games you buy. You cannot lend a digital game to a friend. I know you can do certain things. You can give your friend a login, or you could do... They had a form of, like, family sharing in the past, but it was a limited form, uh, which we'll get to in a second so let's run down the post first but that's immediately what i thought about are you gonna let me share games within the same household that would be obviously the limiting factor with something like family sharing i would imagine that would be the case because you know i understand you know lending out games to somebody that lives in a different household that would be like kind of crazy uh and they probably wouldn't implement that but let's talk about it steam families is a collection of new and existing family related features it replaces both steam family sharing and steam family view so this has been available to an extent before with family sharing giving you a single location to manage which games your family can access and when they can play Create a Steam family. To get started, you can create a Steam family and then invite up to five family members. You can manage your family from your Steam client, mobile device, or web browser. So yeah, for those of you that, uh, you know, got quite the big family, maybe you and your significant other have been, uh, you know, having a lot of kids. We do have a limit here, guys. Up to five family members, a family of six. For those of you with a family of 36, like, that's not gonna work. You gotta limit it to a family of six. So keep that in mind. By joining a Steam family, Family, each member gains access to the following Steam features. Family sharing. Okay, so this is the big stuff. When you join a Steam family, you automatically gain access to the shareable games that your family members own. This has been the case with family sharing in the past. And we'll talk about the shareable games and what games are shareable and what games are not. And they will also be able to access the shareable titles in your library. The next time you log into Steam, the new family library will appear in the left column as a subsection of your games list. You maintain ownership of your current titles, and when you purchase a new game, it'll show up in your collection. Best of all, when you are playing a game from your family library, you will create your own saved games, earn your own Steam achievements, have access to workshop files, and more. Family sharing enables you to play games from other family members' libraries, even if they are online playing another game that is massive if your family library has multiple copies of a game multiple members of the family can play that game at the same time so if you're in a family you own a copy of let's say you know some multiplayer game let's say Baldur's Gate 3 if you own Baldur's Gate 3 Baldur's Gate 3 is a shareable game but if you're playing Baldur's Gate 3 and only one family member owns the copy then you are playing that copy of Baldur's Gate 3 if multiple people in the family own a copy of Baldur's Gate uh, Baldur's Gate 3 then more people can jump in generally how it works if you actually owned a copy of the game but you know, or multiple copies of the game. Uh, that makes all the sense in the world to me. If your family library, again, has multiple copies, multiple members of the family can play that game, and I would imagine it's equivalent to the number of copies in the family. If you have two copies uh, in your family library uh, across two members, then four members can jump in and play the game, so keep that in mind as well. For more detail, look at how family sharing works. Do They do have an FAQ. Family sharing is a feature that developers may opt their games out of for technical or other reasons at any time so keep that in mind as well so the thing with this the last time i used family sharing the limiting factor to it was yes you could share games you could family share games but once a family member got into a game and started playing a game the other family member was locked out of their entire library. It wasn't a case of, oh, they're playing a game on my library, I can play something else in my library. That wasn't the case before, and if I am understanding this right, 
That would be the case with this new beta update that, hey, I have a copy of Baldur's Gate 3. Let's say my hypothetical son wants to play ba Baldur's Gate 3 as well. He can play Baldur's Gate 3 uh, on his computer while I play, uh, let's say, Final Fantasy 7 Remake or whatever. And that should go because both those games are Steam shareable and uh, Baldur's Gate 3 for sure is. Final Fantasy 7 I'm pretty certain is as well. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is a shareable game. He can play Baldur's Gate 3. I could play Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and you'd be good to go. That's pretty huge. Like, I don't know if enough is being made about this, but that's pretty huge. And from what I knew about family sharing before, again, the limiting factor was that if a family member was playing a game in the past, you were then locked out of your entire library, which just kind of negates the purpose of sharing. Sharing is great. Like, if I had physical copies of Baldur's Gate 3 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake, oh, I can give you my Baldur's Gate 3 copy, then I could play Final Fantasy 7 Remake. In physical gaming, if I give somebody my Baldur's Gate 3 copy, I am not suddenly locked out to, of all of my other physical games. You guys get what I'm saying? Like, that was a huge limiting factor of this, but if this the case is now, I can share games and then still retain access to the rest of my library, that's absolutely massive because, again, I don't think that was the case before. Now, I haven't done family sharing in a long, long time, to be fair. But when I did do it, again, that was the huge limiting factor that I was just like, okay, this is like nonsense. I don't even want to do it. Uh, there's no point to it, but there you go with that. Obviously, as we move on from that, parental controls are gonna be huge. Like, if you are getting your son, uh, if you're giving your son or your kid access to uh, your Steam library, look, there's some titles that maybe some of you Neanderthals don't want uh, your kid to see. Steam families include new parental controls that allow parents to set limits on what and when, ch uh, and when children play games on Steam. You can control which games your children have access to and monitor their activity. This information is available from whenever you access Steam, including your mobile device or or when you're away from home. So yeah, if you don't want, you know, somebody in your family to see a certain copy of a game, uh, you can hide that. You know, Steam's been doing pretty well as far as offering you your privacy settings. For whatever reason, you know, some of you guys might be sinking a lot of time into an MMO and you don't want your family member to know about that or they you don't want them to know that you're into a lot of weeb games, for example. If you're gonna get made fun of by your kid, if your son's gonna beat you up because you're playing a lot of anime JRPGs, yeah, like, you can hide those games from your kid and your kid won't judge you as much. So that's pretty advantageous for those of you that are threatened by your child. So you know, maybe take advantage of that as well. Members of a Steam family can have one or two roles, adult or child. Any adult family member can manage invites and apply account restrictions. Children are subject to parental controls and do not have uh, permissions to manage the family. Parental control features let adults allow access to appropriate games. Okay, right there. Restrict access to the Steam store, community, or friends chat. Set playtime limits hourly or daily. How about that? Setting playtime limits? That's, that's kind of dope. That's kind of dope if you want your kids to do like their homework and whatnot. View play Playtime reports, a, a few playtime reports. What, what do we got here? Like a report card of what games they're playing? That's absolutely hilarious. Approve or deny requests from child accounts for additional playtime or feature access, temporary or permanent. Uh, recover a child's account if they lost their password as well. Then you have child purchase requests. We understand a common and sometimes time-consuming task is for parents is purchasing games for their children. This usually requires that parents complete a gift purchase or let their kids borrow a credit card to streamline the process. Steam families introduced a new payment option where a child account can request an in-family adult to pay for their shopping card. The adult can approve and pay for the purchase from their mobile device or email. Once approved, all games from their shopping card will be added to the child's account. Pretty effective there as well. And uh, if you want to take advantage of all of this to test the new Steam Families feature, you will need to op uh, be opted into the Steam Family Beta. Any family members you invite will also need to join the beta. I don't know how many of you are trying to get all your entire family to jump into the beta program, so keep that in mind. Like, uh, this is cool stuff, but most of you, I imagine, are going to wait for the full thing to roll out. While Steam is running, check, uh, click on the Steam upper left, then choose the Settings menu, select Interface, then under the Client Beta Participation, select the drop-down menu, select Steam Family Beta from the drop-down list, and click OK. So there there you go with all of that. There's an FAQ as well that goes more in-depth on more information. I'll go over that in a future video. Uh, some things to note. As far as shareable games, because I think that's what most of you guys care about. Uh, games that require a third-party launcher, I, I believe all of those you can't share. So Red Dead Redemption 2, um, you know, the Ubisoft games, all of those you cannot share those games if they require an external launcher. So keep that in mind. The actual uh, limitations for 
what games are shareable uh it's not that cr it's like there's a lot of games that you can share that's what i'm trying to say like hell divers 2 baldur's gate 3 dead by daylight cyberpunk 2077 elden ring pal world enshrouded hogwarts legacy uh final fantasy 7 remake integrate uh you know they they have a whole list so you can share all those games grand blue fantasy relink it's a lot of titles and it seems like it'll be an opt-in opt-out kind of situation uh for every individual uh studio but it seems like majority of games unless they require a third-party launcher um are good to go and uh, i would imagine like more multiplayer games i've heard there are some like anti-cheat related things where some multiplayer titles they might not want to be shareable but i digress this is great starfield dying light 2 stray divinity original sin 2 Baldur's Gate 3 as i mentioned dead space remake i mean that's oh dead space remake doesn't run through origin right it's a native steam title come on ea more native steam titles so we can share them uh but dead space remake is uh that that was a one of one it, it wasn't a case of ea moving to all games being uh not requiring origin but man that, that's another reason origin uh, uh, ea drop origin nobody wants that nonsense uh or ea uh what whatever they call it these days um but yeah dead space remake being shareable as well but that'll do it for me again huge features huge updates rolling out this is massive for steam and really one step forward for digital gaming as a whole if i'm interpreting things correctly which i think i am but that'll do it for me your thoughts down below as always guys thanks for watching and i will catch you guys in the next one peace out Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate it if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.